we bring you your favorite Marian devotion from the parish of our Mother of Perpetual Help in Ipoh, Malaysia. Our devotion was recorded at the St. Mary's Chapel in Ipoh. We have also invited one of our general consultants from Rome to share with us the great love St. Alphonsus had for Mary, our Blessed Mother. May our devotions always bring us closer to Jesus. We begin by calling upon the Spirit of God. Spirit of God in the clear running waters, blowing to greatness the trees on the hill. Spirit of God. Joy and peace be with you. I'm once again in this beautiful chapel as the people are gathering to celebrate the Eucharist in preparation for their great feast. The nine-day novena has begun and so I would like you to join us online for our devotion. Let's begin asking the blessings of the Trinity in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear wonderful friends in Christ, we are always grateful to God for the abundant blessings we have received from Him to the prayers of our Mother of Perpetual Help. Let us once more ask her to pray with us and for us. Join us in these wonderful intentions that is commemorated during the week. Pray with us. Since nuclear weapons testing began on the 16th of July, 1945, over 2,000 have taken place. In the early days of nuclear testing, little consideration was given to its devastating effects on human life, let alone the dangers of nuclear fallout from atmospheric tests. Hindsight and history have shown us the terrifying and tragic effects of nuclear weapons testing, especially 
when controlled conditions go awry. And in light of the far more powerful and destructive nuclear weapons that exist today. On the International Day Against Nuclear Tests, the world must speak with one voice to end this practice once and for all. Most gracious and merciful God, in the shadow of devastation brought by nuclear warfare and disasters, we humbly come before you seeking your comfort and wisdom. We acknowledge the stark lessons learned, the fragility of life, the fleeting nature of peace, and the devastating consequences of hate and division. Lord, teach us to cherish life with a renewed reverence, to embrace love as the foundation of our, of our actions, and to reject hate in all its destructive forms. For this we pray. Help us, O loving Mother. Forced disappearance is more than a human rights violation against an individual. Forced disappearance has frequently been used as a strategy to spread terror within the society. The feeling of insecurity generated by this practice is not limited to the close relatives of the disappeared, but also affects their communities and society as a whole. The victims are frequently tortured and in constant fear for their lives. Loving Father, we seek your divine intervention in the face of the unspeakable evil of forced disappearances. This cruel act, more than a violation of human rights, is an assault on the very dignity and sanctity of life you have bestowed upon us. Lord, we lift up to you the countless souls who have vanished without a trace. The families left in agony, yearning for answers, longing for the return of their loved ones. In the darkness of their sufferings, be their light and their hope. For them, we pray. Help us, O loving Mother. The International Day for People of African Descent is a day designated by the United Nations to recognize and celebrate the contributions and achievements of people of African descent around the world. It aims to promote respect, understanding and awareness of the diverse cultures, histories and experiences of people of African descent as well as to support their rights and address issues such as discrimination and inequality. The day also serves as a reminder to continue working towards equality and justice for people of African descent. Eternal and loving God, on this day we join together to honour and celebrate the rich heritage and profound contributions of people of African descent around the world. Lord, bless the descendants of Africa, wherever they may be, and guide us all in the pursuit of justice, peace and true equality. May the contributions of people of African descent continue to shine as a beacon of hope and inspiration for generations to come. For this we pray. Help us, O loving Mother. Merdeka Day is also known as Independence Day. It commemorates the country's independence from British colonial rule on August 31, 1957. Recently, there is an aggressive crackdown on free speech and peaceful protests, harassing, intimidating and arbitrarily arresting activists and critics of the government. There are politicians that frequently use hateful rhetoric to divide the country and the many races in Malaysia. Lord, we lift up to you the nation of Malaysia, a land of rich diversity where many cultures and races come together. Yet we recognize that within this beauty, there are those who suffer under the weight of discrimination, racism, and treated as second-class citizens, and also deprived of what is rightfully theirs. Lord, we pray for the minority races and religions in Malaysia who face these daily struggles. 
we ask for your strength and encouragement to be with them as they navigate a Muslim world that often seems unfriendly. Lord, we ask for your protection over all Malaysians, that they may be shielded from harm and from the harshness of prejudice. For this we pray. Help us, O loving Mother. Together we turn to our Heavenly Father and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. It's a joy to read and share the letters that have come into our website. Dearest Mother, every day is a battle at work. My workplace is toxic. My bosses are like snakes and the only silver lining are some of my colleagues whom I work well with. Thank you for your prayers and guidance, Mother. I will not be able to sustain without them. I love you, Mother. Dearest Mother of Perpetual Help, I am a single mother and I play the role of father and mother. Sometimes I feel lost because the needs of my son is not fulfilled by his biological father. Protect my son from the temptations of the world. May my son find maturity when he does national service and help him to settle down in his new job. He is surrounded by a Muslim majority. Protect him in his encounters with them. Also help him to be permanently employed in the company he's working for. Thank you, Mother, from your grateful daughter. Dearest Lord, please guide the Wilaya Persekutuan Sukma Karate team. Help them give their best performance and win. Be with them throughout the event. Help them make themselves proud, their coaches and the team also. Dearest Mother Mary, my friend had a bad fall. May he not suffer any concussions in the brain. I pray for your intercession that his collarbone injury will heal from your loving daughter. Dear Mother of Perpetual Help, I pray for my family to live in harmony. There is a lot of tension and misunderstandings because of pride and ego. Bring healing to all the hurts in our family from your loving children. Dearest Mother Mary, I'm almost giving up on my two sons who do not want to attend Mass. Now that they are in their late teens, they feel that they do not need God. Please ask your son to guide them so that they will not be among the lost sheep like so many people today. May a mother's prayer be answered from your loving daughter. Dear Mother Mary, I had a freak accident but was unhurt. Help me be safe on the road and to be alert at all times. I thank God for the help I received from my siblings. Dearest Mother of Perpetual Help, please intercede with your powerful intercession for a cure to my sickness, my loneliness, and protect me from all danger from your loving daughter. Dear Mary, I know my children are into pornography. They will not admit this and I don't want to appear like a prude. They are growing up and I know they will find their way through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Help me to be a good parent and to understand their needs from your loving son. Dear Mother Mary, please intercede and help bring peace in Palestine. I pray for a successful ceasefire from your loving children. Dear Mother of Perpetual Help, our country Malaysia is going to celebrate its 67th in independence. Help guide our leaders who are motivated by money and self-interest. The new policies are trying to turn our once secular country into an Islamic state. When this happens, our economy will suffer gravely and the minority races will not have a voice because of strict censorship. Malaysia 
has a big foreign debt and our currency is not doing well. The lower income people will suffer the most. I think there is nothing much to celebrate after 67 years because of the slow death of democracy and human rights from your loving son. Dear Mother Mary, an old friend has stage 4 pancreatic cancer which has spread to her liver and also the peritoneum. Mother, help to relieve her pain and suffering. If it is God's will, may she return to the Lord in peace. Be with her family and the caregivers from your loving children. With all these requests and petitions, we turn to our loving Mother and pray the prayer of confidence. Mother of Perpetual Help, we come to you and place our trust in you. You are a mother of mercy. You are called by all the refuge and the hope of sinners. Be then our refuge and our hope. Help us for the love of Jesus Christ. Stretch out your hand to us poor sinners. We bless and thank God for giving us this confidence in you. In the past, we have so often sinned, but with your help we can conquer, and you will help us if we pray to you. In all our temptations, may we always turn to you and say, Mary, help me. Let me never lose my God. Amen. Let us share with Mary her prayer of praise and thanksgiving to God. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He looks on his servant in her nothingness. Henceforth all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy is his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He puts forth his arm in strength and scatters the proud hearted. He casts the mighty from their thrones and raises the lowly. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel his servant, remembering his mercy, the mercy promised to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary, you are the mother of Christ. And you are our mother also. Heavenly Father, we thank you with all our heart for giving us Mary to be our mother. She is so loving, so thoughtful, so understanding and so kind. We thank you for her. Amen. Please join in this beautiful hymn, the Ave Maria, composed by Cassini in the 17th century.
My dear brothers and sisters, I'd like to reflect with you today on St. Alphonsus and his devotion to the Virgin Mary, our Blessed Mother. St. Alphonsus is known in the church for many things. Founder of the Congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer, a doctor of the church, doctor of prayer, prolific writer, wrote over 110 works, musician, composer, artist, patron of moral theologians and confessors. So many titles given to him. But if there's one thing that is very special to the life of St. Alphonsus is his devotion to our Blessed Mother, the Virgin Mary. His second name was Maria, Alfonso Maria. And he loved to be called using both names, Alfonso Maria de Liguori. This in itself drew him to a very special personal devotion to our Blessed Mother. St. Alphonsus and his devotion to our Blessed Mother is rooted in his understanding of Christology. One cannot separate the two. The love for Mary flows from a deep love for Jesus, her son. In fact, Mary cannot be understood on her own. For Alphonsus, Mary is always understood, appreciated in relationship to her son, Jesus. For she is the mother of God. Jesus, her son. And so, in understanding Mary as intercessor, Mary as one who's there as a model for every Christian to emulate, she intercedes with her son on behalf of us Christians. She is the model of Christian life for every Christian to follow so that they become more and more like Jesus. So, Alphonsine Mariology is deeply connected to his Christology, to his understanding of Jesus, who, as Redemptress, we are called to follow the example of Jesus in proclaiming good news to the poor. One of the most famous works in the Catholic Church that stands out even today, translated in as many languages as possible, is Alphonsus's work entitled The Glories of Mary, where he speaks on various aspects of the life of our Blessed Mother. In this beautiful work, one has many anecdotes, stories, simple, that arouses a deep sense of ardor, devotion and love for the Blessed Mother. Alphonsus in his writings always use the phrase Mary, through Jesus, to Jesus through Mary. He'd begin a letter citing the Blessed Mother. He'd end the letter with a salutation to our Blessed Mother. This became a tradition from St. Alphonsus in the life of the congregation as well. Alphonsus, while speaking to people who came to him for advice, whether it were lay people, couples, he'd always end by calling on them to turn to our Blessed Mother, to seek her intercession, to call on her protection, and above all, to follow her example. He did this and again and again with young priests who came to him for advice. He did this again with seminarians. And let me quote from Alphonsus talking to a seminarian. He said, my dear son, if you wish to persevere, have great reverence for the Mother of God. If you fail to do so, you will lose your vocation. Mary is the mother of perseverance. Call upon her in the morning when you arise and say to her, Holy Virgin Mary, thou art my mother and my queen. I recommend myself to thee. Assist me that I may not lose my God. Obtain for me, O my Queen, a great and constant love for God, the grace to serve Him faithfully in this congregation to which He has called me, and finally the happiness to die 
in the grace of God as thy faithful servant. Together in one faith, we turn to the Blessed Mother and pray the Memorare. Remember, most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly to you, Virgin of Virgins, my Mother. To you I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in your mercy, hear and answer me. Lord Jesus Christ, you bore our sufferings and carried our sorrows. Hear our prayers for the sick. Help them to unite themselves with your sufferings. And if it is your will, may they get better. Let them never forget that you care for them. Amen. Mary, from thy sacred image, with those eyes so sadly sweet, Mother of perpetual succor, see us kneeling at thy feet. You have given them bread from heaven. Let us pray, O oh God, in this wonderful sacrament, you have left us a memorial of your passion. We ask you to enable us so to worship the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may constantly feel in our lives the effects of your redemption. You live and reign forever and ever.
Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit of Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Amen. We come to the end of our devotion once again. It's a joy to craft these devotions with our crew and all those involved. I ask you to join us once again. In the background is this wonderful grotto that was built many years ago. We started very, very small in this chapel and now we have grown to such a big portion. So thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Join in this hymn we have prepared for you. See you next week and God bless you. We end our devotion with a composition from Gustav Holst a great composer of German and Swedish ancestry. Join this hymn, Three Days. Please join us once again next week for another creative Marian devotion. Three days.